Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to see you again. Uh, and uh, today we're going to talk about computational advertising. Computational advertising is actually a very, um, very mature industry. In fact, uh, if you look at uh, what is really working very well in terms of applying AI, in terms of applying machine learning, then computational advertising will be one of those areas where such a big companies like Facebook and Google put the billions of dollars into making sure that the ad system is uh, working very well. And the reason why they need to spend so much money on this is because, of course, this is their main business. Uh, this is where the main revenues come from, and therefore, this heart of their DSP, the mindset platform, in-house platform for Facebook and Google, is have to be have to be uh, working very properly to generate revenues for these giants of our world. So uh, we will introduce uh, advertising. We'll talk about types of advertising, economics, the key issues and challenges. Um, I also read in another course just on this because the company were um, a partner as well. Uh, we are specifically focused on computational advertising. So this is one of my uh, favorite topics. And uh, you are very welcome to ask any questions. I will be happy to respond. So uh, a couple of references. Uh, this is also quite a widely uh, known research topic. Therefore, there's a couple of research works uh, devoted to computational advertising. And therefore, you can uh, read about that as well. Of course, for us in this model, uh, the particular interest mm -hmm. lies in the area how uh, AI techniques, machine learning techniques can really uh, apply, apply, uh, be applied to, to do a better job in the field of computational advertising. So what is important and uh, what, is, uh, what is the key problem of advertising you're making? So basically, we want to find a best match between a user and a given context. And we want to show a suitable ad to the right people. So the context of the user is kind of a page. It will appear on query of the user in case of a search engine or maybe his social network. And uh, it's uh, always tough to de def define what is like the best user, what is this best user. And the parameter that come in mind could be the relevance, the user experience, basically the information of the ads, and uh, of course, profitability for the uh, uh, advertiser in terms of revenues, for the uh, hosting platform, let's say Facebook, and also for the placement. So advertisement platform, let's say website. Uh, it's a multidisciplinary science. Uh, that's a lot of national language processing happening there, information retrieval. Uh, that, that is related to search ads, statistical modeling and machine learning that is related to decisions on who you should show the ad, who you shouldn't show the ad. Optimization, of course, optimization related to optimizing algorithms uh, and optimization of the ad campaigns. Uh, Microeconomics uh, recommend the systems a lot. A lot of uh, disciplines are contributing to this large area. And therefore, in the business schools and in computer science schools, you can commonly find professors like myself uh, focused on uh, different aspects of this field. A classical advertisement model that works in TV usually works in a very straightforward manner. You don't have control of anything. You, you know, usually you have a contract with some agency, agency have a contract with a TV channel and because agency buys a lot of, uh, of the ads, a lot of uh, the space in the TV channel to show the ads, uh, because of that, uh, uh, the agencies can, uh, can uh, get the better deals, they have a margin and therefore it's all work. So this has been a pretty much industry standard till the moment when, uh, the new era of social networks of search engines come in and we now doing computational advertising where we have a billions of display opportunities billions of creatives it can be very personal it actually costs much less than let's say showing an ad on tv and it's so much easier to quantify it because uh, obviously uh, you know who's in the ad you know when the ad was shown how much was exactly paid so it's much more transparent as compared to the traditional advertising so uh, what is a computational, why it's called computational? 
because there's a lot of computations happening and it's always a matching problem with algorithm syncing, um, by basically matching the advertiser, the ad to the uh, consumer of the ad to the user. And then it has transformed the ecosystem completely. So there are different types of advertising. So we'll be talking about sponsor search, about contextual advertising, about display advertising. Uh, particular social media advertising as one of the examples. In a sponsor search, uh, we uh, basically have some search criteria, right? Like a query. And um, typically, uh, that uh, comprises of uh, uh, texts, uh, like the results of this can be some text, but also can be even the image content, right? Uh, so uh, major players in this market, of course, Google, and then you look at others, Bing, Yahoo, uh, they are very small compared to Google. And then Baidu is strong in China, but not anywhere else in the world, right? So it's strong in the Chinese community. Uh, uh, if you look in the search history, you'll see that in late 90s, there was a search engine called Alta Vista. So it has started the sponsor search model. Uh, but uh, people were rejecting it. People were saying, okay, why do I see ads inside my, uh, you know, inside my uh, search results? Uh, then uh, there was go2.com. They also were uh, trying to show the paid ads to people. Then, uh, then Google tried sponsor search again, and this time it was good. So because the market pattern, because generally the market was ready for this. So, uh, also, advertisers cannot get enough volume, right? So the, the platforms were really looking at, uh, like Google search wouldn't ha have not shown enough, haven't shown ads enough, so that advertisers get really interested in it at that time. Uh, but then uh, if, you, if you search uh, something in Baidu, some, uh, some search query, you'll see uh, a lot of uh, results there. And then uh, the areas in the red, uh, basically rectangulars, are the, all the ads. So I'm showing you Baidu because uh, you all have seen Yandex, you all have seen Google. So just wanted to show you something, something you probably haven't seen yet. So then uh, you can always go and uh, get the ads. You can always uh, see this ad block where you can have an action button that help you to. Uh, go into, 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 into the website of the advertiser. You search in Google, you also can get a paid ad. You see there's a little uh, ad box in the top screen and then ad has different parameters, different uh, placements and formats. And this is all can be controlled by the advertisers. So you look for uh, guitar lessons in Google, right? You can see that there's lots of ads. So that does mean what? This means that loads of advertisers actually competing for space to show the ads with respect to uh, this search criteria. And you can see that this box of the ads, it shows uh, that this is advertisement. So of course, uh, the time when results were just pushed up have passed and now all search engines and must provide notification indication that the content that you're seeing is advertisement. We also have contextual advertisement, so uh, it's directly driven by the context of web page. So it's like a match. It's called. This is also known as tricks, driven ads, contextual ads, or AdSense. Oh, and that is can be uh, textual or graphical. So let's say uh, this is an example of context ads, right? So we we see the ads uh, uh, to the particular to the particular products and cookies when we are browsing some uh, uh, chocolates, uh, chocolates and other recipes type of website, right? So this example of context ad because it's in context of the uh, desserts. And you can also see that uh, there is a context ads in the New York Times newspaper. So they get shown with respect to, uh, with respect to the, uh, to the um, ferry, to the fer fer ferry article that about it. there was a very there was a ferry crashed a sink sunk uh, and so then they are showing you cruise advertisements and uh, also show you some cruises because this article is about the ferry right so uh, but you can see that there is a problem right also yeah so you 
the article is about how the ferry has been crashed, but then uh, you know you are showing advertising, advertising more ferries, more dead people. So this is a problem of relevance, and this is a problem that uh, people need to be solved because actually advertisers will spend money to show these banners on the Holland Advantage and in a Europe cruise. But uh, reality, with respect to this kind of context, this may be very irrelevant, actually. It may be even discouraging people to go for the cruises. So there is also a uh, display advertising, and we take a uh, three minutes break. Okay, let's continue. There's so many of us today. Yeah, nice to see you. I'm happy that you are joining the joining the module uh, in a, such a such a good representative, big number of people. I'm happy to see you. So uh, display advertising. Uh, this is another type of ads. Uh, this advertising is uh, uh, pretty much banners, right? So main purpose of display ads is to deliver general advertisements and brand messages to site visitors. So it's a website, and then there's some banner pop-ups, and then you can see the, the results in the ad, right? Uh, hopefully relevant to you. And um, display advertising is also very common on PK, very common on Facebook. So you can see sometimes somebody's uh, banner is coming. Sometimes it's a Facebook uh, banner comes out, comes out. Sometimes you browse the website, you also can see the banner in somewhere in the corner, and uh, or maybe just inside the timeline that you're scrolling. So this is all display advertisement. And uh, uh, the way the ads get mapped to particular people is through the targeting techniques. So, and these techniques are usually related to your interests, to interest of the people. Uh, so if you if you go further. You can see some, some examples of display ads, right? So this is a vertical horizontal banner. There's a vertical banner here, and this is all advertisement, and then it's, it's in the Yahoo when you are reading uh, sports. So display ads can be shown in an in a organic website, let's say in Yahoo itself. It can be also shown on uh, partner websites. So for example, uh, it could be that uh, uh, some website agree with Yahoo that Yahoo can show the ads when people buy on Yahoo. Uh, sometimes, uh, basically, sometimes it's happening in a native infrastructure of the website, like Facebook or Yahoo. Sometimes it's happening on the network of the websites. That's how DSP platforms are working. Another display ad example in Chinese websites. And we also have social media advertising. Social media advertising is a form of internet marketing tool that uh, uh, uses the space in the social media website to show the ads and the goal is to produce content that users will share with their social networks right so it's called social media advertising so for example you can advertise a post you can do the post boosting so that your post that you have posted in your branded page on social media has been shown to many many people this is an example of social media advertising uh, 
So this is uh, can be a photo ad. It looks like a Facebook ad, and then you can click the like on top, and that will be like of the Facebook page. You can see the video ad. You can see the carousel ad. You can see the uh, collection ads, and you can see Instagram carousel and Instagram videos ad, and many many types. So this. Uh, uh, types of ads are called ad placements, right? So, uh, uh, depending on placement, uh, the ad can, can have a different cost because different places placements can be shown in different parts. Let's say you cannot get carousel of Instagram, I guess, in a desktop uh, Instagram app, just cannot. And therefore, different audiences look at it, different competition is happening, and therefore, different price for different places is happening. So uh, Facebook have a Facebook audience targeting. So it comprises of location, age, gender, and language. It's called demographics uh, or basic uh, demographics targeting. So you have education, ethnic affinity, gener generation, uh, location, etc. So all this can be considered demographics in a sense. It also has the interest targeting. So business and industry, entertainment, family relationship, etc. In fact, Facebook has tens of thousands of interest targeting that can get inferred automatically by machine learning. Uh, Facebook looks at us, figure out what we are interested in based on our content, and then based on this information, decided how, uh, what kind of labels you want to assign to yourself in order to, uh, in order to later show your ads. So if you're curious, you can go in the Facebook uh, settings. There will be um, ads and security, something like that, or ads and privacy. And then say that you can see which interest Facebook has assigned to you. And based on this interest, the ads will be shown to you. So then you also have a custom audiences. Custom audiences is basically when um, Facebook uploads, you, you upload to Facebook, let's say, a list of email addresses or list of um, uh, phone numbers. These things get hashed. So when they get they get hashed by JavaScript. So when they get uploaded to Facebook, Facebook never receives the actual uh, private data. It only receives the um, the uh, hash, hashes of the phone numbers, etc. Then later, uh, it maps uh, these numbers to the hashes inside Facebook database. And if such phone number was used to register a Facebook account or such. Uh, email, let's say, has been used to register a Facebook account, then uh, the match will happen and these people will see the ads that you'll use to run this through custom audiences. They also have uh, so-called lookalikes audiences, right? So this is another example when Facebook use their own uh, kind of uh, content-based recommender system to populate people that you already have in your CRM and can uh, spread the world further. Uh, we also have Twitter, uh, have, Twitter have promoted tweets, uh, Twitter have followers campaign, Twitter have website card, Twitter have uh, basically all types of different ads you can imagine. They are different. TikTok has uh, their own placements. So basically the social media ads are different based on the specific uh, properties of particular social networks. So for example, this is an ad card. Um, and Facebook also have app install campaigns, right? Same as MK, same as uh, Google, Yandex, and TikTok. Those campaigns, for example, placements are particularly focused on uh, push people to install the apps. So in Twitter, audience targeting, you have gender, languages, device, platform, and said that tail targeting here happens through the keywords. So in internet, in, in Facebook, it's a predefined list of interests, and uh, in the Twitter, it's uh, keywords, about keywords that you can use to target. And you also can uh, list the people that you want to target. Uh, um, you can, for example, uh, target people who are similar to follower base of a particular account or just give them uh, account IDs and then you can run ads based on those account IDs. Uh, we have also a Pinterest. Uh, Pinterest uh, have ads. We have Weibo and WeChat, which also has ads. And so many, many, many different types of ads can be done in different platforms. Uh, there is uh, advantages of social media ads. Uh, you can target people better because social networks know literally everything about us. And uh, you can share and interact and tie back your uh, ad audiences back to a uh, social media account so you can retain the relationship. A business or marketing wise speaking you will be building a marketing funnel of having an ad but then make people be your advocates and your uh, uh, customers eventually 
And so there is an understanding of so-called economics of online advertisement. So uh, just let's talk about the data. And I, by the way, this is already outdated data. It's 2017. Now I believe it's uh, already past uh, 1,000 billion per year of world media ad budget. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, by the way, due to inefficient ads uh, in the year 2020, uh, Facebook has, uh, so it's, it's about 80 billion uh, US dollars has been spent just on Facebook by brands, and uh, it is estimated about 30 to 40 billion were pretty much wasted. So they were wasted by brands due to the inefficient ads. So if you're interested in this area, actually it's quite interesting topic that you can address with machine learning. You can build some machine learning systems that can actually help you to make ads more efficient for brands, and therefore you can save uh, you know, 20, 30 billion USD as uh, every year, yeah, as, as, as a contribution of your algorithm, maybe. So uh, in the world, uh, there's uh, more than 1,000 billion, um, billion ads has been, uh, money has been spent in digital advertising. Uh, digital ad is about 30%, 35% increasing, and it will surpass TV, uh, it has surpassed TV already, in fact, in 2017. Uh, social ad budget worldwide, 16% uh, of total uh, digital ad and uh, about 60 billion in 2014 and in 16 it was 32 billion and 17 is 36 billion and as I tell you in uh, 2020 just Facebook itself is over 80 billion already. In 2016 it was 11, right? So it gro had grown uh, almost by um, uh, eight times or at least seven times from 2016 till 2020, just in four years. So this, this is uh, the potential and opportunity of growth. Um, uh, so there is, uh, so, so how does it work, right? So we have uh, advertiser, we have end user, uh, uh, we have uh, mm, some web page ads, and we have a page, right? So basically uh, people browsing ads people, the end users, they are browsing the web pages and then they also therefore browsing ads that get appeared on these web pages. And advertisers, they are registering an ad agency system and then they um, run, run the ads. And then there's some matching happening between particular ads that advertiser want to run with the web page context, for example, this context ad. And the match is happening, then the matching happens uh, through the billions of queries at the same time in seconds. And then the ad gets shown to end user. So this is how it works. So we have users, publishers, and advertisers. And we also have ad agencies that you know put all these uh, things together in this ecosystem. And nowadays, ad agencies very often replaced by AI platforms because algorithms and systems often can outperform ad agencies in terms of uh, performance it can provide. Uh, so. Uh, in sponsor search, publishers also, publisher is also a matchmaker. So basically publishers is the search engines themselves and therefore they make a decision. In contextual ads, uh, uh, publisher is also a matchmaker in, in equal context, but uh, uh, publisher is also the advertiser. So this is like in-house ads coming in. Uh, and uh, in the uh, overall ecosystem, uh, advertisers and publishers and users could be a different parties, right? Publisher can be just a website, it's a New York Times. Advertisers can be, let's say, a bank, Bank of America, and then users could be those people who are watching Bank of America, who advertise, who allow uh, New York, uh, who allow, uh, like New York Times allow the publishers, uh, the advertisers, to publish the ads about Bank of America and the New York Times newspaper, and then the users watch as this uh, uh, newspaper online. So that's how it works. Uh, revenue models. Uh, there are different revenue models for the ad systems. Can be uh, based on so-called CPM, cost per, per thousand inflations, or why it's called CPM. It's cost per million, actually. It's uh, historically called, but uh, reality is it's called cost per thousand impressions. Uh, usually it's used for uh, graphical banner ads and brand advertising. Uh, could be also paid in advance. So sometimes people just buy CPM first and then after then they run. Then there's also have cost per click, CPC, typically used for contextual ads, search engines, and uh, 
we can also have CPT, CPA, or uh, uh, CPR. It's also called CPR, cost per result, or cost per transaction, cost per action. So usually some referral fees or affiliate fees. Right? So it's used for shopper shopping. So basically, if you receive the transaction, then you pay for the ad. If you didn't receive any transaction, then you don't pay for the ad. Um, so publishers uh, get uh, the revenue share from the ads that have been shown in their website. And intermediaries like ad agencies or systems that manage all this get a cut. So they uh, basically take some margin on top of the money that they actually have spent to show this ad for the publishers. Uh, in display advertising, uh, that's a lot of, uh, a lot of, um, uh, a lot of uh, big brands working uh, uh, worldwide. So you can see in the uh, bottom up corner is the famous agencies like Omnicom, WPP, Publicis, IPG, Inia Brands, Havas, Denso. Uh, this is our all key uh, players in the agency world. And then if you have trending desks, uh, trending desks is basically where this agency buy ads. And then we have DSPs, uh, demand side platforms. So the DSPs is basically the technical part that help you to buy advertisement. And you have uh, ad exchanges. So this is where uh, people, uh, there was auction is happening where basically the ad decides whether uh, there is uh, where there is an ad to be shown on a particular uh, website with a particular price. So this is where all the also all the computation is happening, right? Then you have ad networks. Basically, this is networks of the uh, publishers. They unite all the publishers, and then also we have uh, SSPs, uh, SSPs and supply chain platforms. So those platforms help you to. Uh, aggregate publishers and let them participate inside the ad networks and we have publishers and consumers in the end. So uh, publishers and consumers in the end is pretty much uh, the, uh, the actual websites that uh, hold, that allow to show ads on their, on their free space. And that's a lot of other tools. There's retargeting tools that help you to reshow ads to people who tend to convert. There is a creative optimization tools uh, that help you to do to, to show right creative to right people. There's media planning and attribution tools. Basically, those tools help you to distribute budgets correctly through different channels. Uh, there's uh, DMPs um, and data aggregators. So these tools basically help you to make a better decisions uh, based upon the uh, based upon the uh, uh, some data inside that they have. Uh, there's also data suppliers, so basically those are mapping to CRM data and other stuff to make this, this DMPs make decisions how to set up DSPs correctly, how to build put the ads and ad exchanges to participate in ad networks to uh, set uh, the, to choose the right publisher from uh, supply set platform SSP to uh, deliver content to the publisher. Uh, so it's a super complicated. Uh, system where many systems communicate with each other and that's why it's so cross-disciplinary. Um, that's, uh, by the way, quite quite cool picture. You can just copy that and then try to study this by yourself. The point is that it's very computationally intensive because last time it was very simple. We have TV, we choose the time, we show the advertisement, done, and we pay for what we show depending on the time. Now the system is look like this, competition is look like that, and you know, you have to uh, have to really, uh, really, really fight a lot. So uh, the platform uh, where, where I'm partnering called Sumin.ai, uh, it uh, sits somewhere in the uh, media planning, creative optimization and TMP side, right? So it's more like a creative optimization and media planning tool to help you to target ads correctly to set up the right setting to the DSP side. So, uh, so an ad agency, uh, service is based on advertising business and it's dedicated to creating planning hand advertising sometimes other forms of promotion marketing promotion for clients and also it, actually it's also the strategy and ad agency is quite a broad term because we actually have creative agencies uh, media buying agencies uh, and consultancy agencies creative agencies create content media buying agencies uh, in charge of planning the media uh, and ads and buy the ads 
and then strategy basically manage another two to figure out what is the right way in universe to do the stuff. Uh, Agency Trading Desk is a massive media buyer and reseller. So this helps you to basically trade the ads. And DSP, the mindset platform, is a technology used to manage and optimize campaigns. So uh, uh, that's, that, that's why uh, that the platform I was just mentioning, so Min.ai is in the DSP side because it helps to plan and optimize campaigns automatically through technology. We also have Ad Exchange. Uh, Ad Exchange is a technology platform that facilitates buying and selling of media advertising in inventory and multiple ad networks. So basically, it's uh, seeing that where all the decisions are making millions of decisions per second. And there's also Ad Network. This is usually a company that connects advertisers to websites that want to post advertisements. So uh, last time in Russia, you, maybe you remember there was Narod.ru website. So if you create a free website inside there, they show a lot of ads on your website because it's free. So this is uh, the business model exactly, right? If your website gets, for example, famous for, for, for some reason, yeah, then uh, they will earn lots of money by people browsing your website and, and you will be getting some, uh, you'll be getting some revenue share and you use your website space for free because ads get shown on your website. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, ad selection objective. What is this uh, parameter and how does it affect the ads? Uh, each participant has its own utility, right? So advertisers wants your ROI, uh, user wants relevance, publisher wants revenue for impressions and search, and network wants revenue and growth, right? So basically it's a lot of stakeholders and applied parties uh, playing inside this ecosystem. So ad selection is optimized for goal and balances utilities in four participants. So let's say uh, Facebook has its own ad selection mechanism in place to make sure that Facebook users are happy to see relevant ads. Facebook advertisers, their brands are happy with their revenues from these ads. And also Facebook itself, uh, which is a publisher also in this, in, this, in this situation, is able to receive enough revenues from all these activities by basically selling the space for the ads. <laughs> Uh, it's a lot of considerations. So the billions here would be billions of individual ads, sponsor search and content match happening every second. Uh, billions of unique queries, millions of searches per hour are happening. Trillions of page impressions uh, get uh, shown all the time and billions of users looking at all these ads and using all this ecosystem. Uh, the millions here would be uh, uh, how many requests uh, and baits uh, and uh, no more than 100 a millisecond response. So basically, all the all the all the responses and requests are sent in real time in terms of who, which brand is showing which ad to who, and at and, 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 uh, at every moment. And of course, uh, if you if you technically speaking about this, every every uh, ad is some amount of computational course you need to spend. Uh, data needs to be in memory, and uh, you also want to request, uh, you, you basically have a, some uh, cost of serving the ad, right? So like internet connection, the serving of content, the, the inbound on about storage, etc. So what are the key uh, issues and challenges in, the, in this industry? So uh, I, I believe the representation is, is one of the challenge, right? You need to represent the user context and you have to make it an efficient and effective way. Remember we were talking about user profiling where uh, we want to figure out what are the interests of people, uh, what are the key, uh, maybe relevant queries related to this guy, et cetera, et cetera. So you need to represent person first in a way that is only relevant ads will be shown to the guy. So you cannot just randomly represent person. You need to make sure that your representation is really related and profile is really relevant to your user. But at the same time, you have to store it efficiently. So you only need to store things that you need and you don't store everything because if you, let's say, Facebook wanna store all information about every user all the time, then it will be very, very uh, cost inefficient for them. And then you have to define a mathematical optimization model. So you, you want to uh, make sure that the constraints of the market gets kept, that all advertisers have chance to show the ads, nobody get forgotten, but at the same time it's fair, so that only people who put enough bidding and bids uh, show the ads and others don't show. 
uh, and uh, then solution of these uh, constraints can be can be done mathematically is what they do. So uh, finding the best ad is a pretty much information to your problem, right? So when you want to show the, like what is the best ad to show to this user? This is your problem. Uh, you need to analyze a query and extract query features, right? So look, uh, for example, query could be a search engine uh, query. This is straightforward. A query can be the fact that some social media user visit a particular page and then we have a placement in this page to show the ad. This also can be query. So it can be content, can be user, can be environment, can be even historical activities of the user. So we need to analyze the documents and extract the document features. Uh, we need to uh, uh, devise a scoring, have a, some, some like a scoring function uh, that uh, predicates on Q features and D features plus weights, right? So basically, we need to have some scoring feature that some decision making function that uh, show uh, add to this guy or not to show this ad, given that he's at this moment in a particular page. And you need to build a search engine that produce quickly uh, the ads that maximize the scoring function. So basically you need to create a search mm -hmm. engine that given this query of user visiting some page or querying into a search engine, always look for the best, most relevant ads for this guy according to the settings, according to the bits and all this. So uh, you can just uh, put it a little bit more details, right? So the corpus of the ads could be uh, some phrase, some title, creative uh, URL and landing page. So basically in search engine, it's just all the creatives related to copy of the ad. Query features can be uh, search keywords or some knowledge about the user who is searching, some context features basically. Uh, which website the person is uh, search for. Uh, you have a context features for the sponsor search, with location of the person, user dates, and previous searches. And you also have uh, some other context features uh, for context search it can be some page topic and page keywords. So if you want also match the query and the add to the context, and you have to be context needs to be uh, considered such as page topic and page keywords. Then based on this information. Uh, you can see actually that this is very similar to how the search engines work. So it's just uh, in ad you have a little bit more parameters and then the relevancy is not only factor you want to consider. So uh, this makes it easier to, uh, to, to work with it. So you also want to define the best match. So what is best match? Uh, ad has different uh, utilities for publishers, advertisers and users. So we have a quality utility and as a factor uh, and uh, uh, so basically you have uh, this uh, basically what you're considering here is the economic interest of the ad agency right so uh, you want to make sure that uh, the quality and also the price factor are all both considered uh, like in a normal search you don't consider that you only care the relevance but here it's not not organic but the paid search we really uh, want to consider economic interest so that the agency can earn money so uh, uh, therefore we have uh, this um, matching function that's uh, showing the 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 the, the, uh, the chance that this ad will be showed to a particular uh, to a particular by, by the request of a particular ad agency to a particular um, user who sees the ad. Uh, so ad text usually have uh, have a quite short text because it is recommended. So it's uh, harder to match this content. The queries that people search are also very sparse. Sometimes they are not exact match to the ad, but they may be some indirect match. So you need to uh, solve this problem and still match them. Also, we have a uh, lot of noisy web content. So it's very hard to figure out um, whether the context is right to show the ad on the website and also whether generally this website is bringing a good traffic and good people to see the ad because later you'll charge advertisement for, this, for showing this ad. You also have a lot of ad and click spam. So basically people clicking the ads but not interested in them or it can be a machine and then advertisers will pay for it but don't get any results and this is a challenge. And uh, you also want to predict the CTR, click-through rate for the new ads. Basically, it will define their relevance to the ads. For social challenges could be uh, uh, some uh, 
content that gets some uh, opinion, right? So we have to deal with the negative sentiments. You have to figure out whether it's gonna affect your cost of your ads or not. You have to profile users. This one we discussed before from multimodal data. You need to analyze behavior of people to figure out what is relevant to them. So in summary, computational advertising is, uh, is a principle, very different way of showing ads as compared to traditional TV ads. And uh, the key topic here is to find a best match between the user and context and suitable ad. And you have to do it very fast. That's why you need to have deep learning, machine learning to really run from this uh, much. And there's a lot of sub problems that exist there. So we need to represent the user rights. Uh, we need to uh, define the optimization problem. We need to find efficient and effective solutions of uh, this problem. So uh, adding ad to uh, context to ads is similar to integration problem of other type of information. So basically you need to consider one more thing and finding the best ad is often type of information to your problem, right? So basically find which, which ad will be the best given this user in this context and this particular moment. And so considering the financial interest of all the parties playing in this ecosystem. Uh, social media advertising has advantages compared to digital advertising. For example, it's better knowledge uh, about the person, so therefore you can get some better better results, better relevancy, uh, and also it can be further fit into the funnel, so you can have a further interaction with the people on social media after they see the ad. The website you cannot because they see the ad. If they didn't go to your landing page, they're forever lost. Social media you still can interact with them if you engage them later. So uh, this is the idea. Uh, I hope this uh, lecture. Uh, was interesting to you and uh, this is enough for you background knowledge to think about whether you really want to understand the technicalities of this and if you want to then this is a very exciting topic uh, you could go into the uh, special books it's usually called programmatic advertisements you can follow the links and also uh, if you feel like you're interested in this area in general uh, I have a couple of partner companies who are really interested uh, to get interns or like a practice uh, people to, to join a company to try to build some algorithms for this uh, type of uh, type of technology. So if you're interested in that, you can also reach to Chi or to me regarding, regarding whether uh, there is a space in these companies to, to join for the internship. And on this note, I would like to uh, uh, finish today. And uh, I guess she will be coming shortly to continue with the additional explanations and tutorials for today. Thanks so much and have a good day.